this introductory series of videos on an introduction to robotics. In our last video, we built a simple circuit on a breadboard using some jumper wire, a resistor, an LED, and a nine volt battery to power it. So here's our nine volt battery, and we've connected it to our breadboard um, and wired it so that our LED turns on. Make sure you go and check out that video if you are new to using a breadboard and these materials to build a circuit. Now, the question is, what if we want to do something more exciting with our LED? Let's say we want to make it blink. So if this is all I had to work with, you know, how would I make this LED blink? Well, I'd have to, you know, connect and disconnect one of the uh, parts of the circuit. So I'd have to pull out a wire and put it back in. Okay. Essentially, it's not very practical to manually try to make this LED blink. And that's where um, a programmable board comes into play. So today, I'm going to introduce to you um, a programmable board also known as a microcontroller, uh, like this Arduino Uno. Um, and there's also different brands, of course. Um, this Elegoo Uno R3 is another example. Let's start by going over just a few simple parts that we will be using today on our microcontroller, and then we will connect our uh, circuit to it. First of all, our, micro our board has a, a brain in it, so that's what the microcontroller is. Um, you'll see it here um, on this Arduino Uno, and for this Elegoo uh, Uno R3 board, you'll see it, it's a little bit larger. And so this is the brain of the board, which is going to receive the instructions um, that we send it using code. Our board itself doesn't have any power within it um, unless we are you know, connecting it externally to draw power from something else. So here is a USB port. Um, we will be using that today to connect the board to our laptop and get our power that way. It serves a dual purpose. Not only does it you know, uh, provide power to our board, but it also gives us a, uh, a way to upload our code to the board. Once we have power to the board, we need to then be able to power our circuit, right? So previously, as I mentioned, we've been using this nine volt battery to power um, our little circuit here with one LED. Um, but we're going to eventually take away that battery so that we can get the power from our board. So uh, there are two pins that are very important and they act like the uh, positive and negative terminals of our battery. Okay, so we'll start with the five volt pin. Um, there's also a 3.3 volt pin. So you'll see that on your board, um, on one side of the board. Uh, so five volts or 3.3 volts, both will uh, be able to um, provide power to the positive power rail on our breadboard. Check out our last video if you're not familiar with the breadboard. So our five volt pin, uh, we can view that kind of like the positive terminal of our battery. And then we have three pins on our board labeled uh, G and D, uh, which stands for ground. So we can imagine the ground pins um, all acting like the negative terminal of our battery. Any one of the three ground pins, so you'll see one here, um, and then two on this side, beside the five volt, um, any one of those can be used to um, connect to our breadboard uh, on the negative power rail. You're gonna plug one end of your USB cable into your laptop and one into um, the board. Now we have our LED and it's on again and instead of being powered by a nine volt battery, we are powering it by, uh, in my case, the laptop battery. 
The next step is um, to rewire this so that I can actually control this LED. Remember, our goal is to make the LED blink. Right now, it's on, but I won't be able to control it because the LED is not connected to one of the digital pins. So these are pins labeled uh, 0 through 13 on one side of the board, and we won't be using 0 and 1, so uh, 2 through 13 are available. And these pins are what connects um, different parts of our circuit to the board, specifically parts that we would like to uh, either receive information from, so that would be an input, um, or that we'd like to send an electrical pulse out to, um, those would be outputs. The LED is an example of an output that we will connect to one of our digital pins so that we can control it. So we're going to take the wire that is coming from our um, the positive side of the LED, so that's the long leg here, and that's this jumper wire, and instead of connecting that to the positive power rail, we are going to disconnect it and connect it to digital pin seven. Okay, now that you have rewired your LED so that it is connected to digital pin seven, uh, we are ready to write the code. As you can see, the LED turned off before it was on uh, because we had given it power when we, were, we had connected it to the positive power rail. Uh, and now it's on digital pin seven. So the digital pins are also able to provide a little bit of power to electrical components like your LED. However, we haven't sent our microcontroller or board any instructions as to turn the LED on yet or not. So that step has to be done first. Remember, when your LED is connected to one of the digital pins, it is only going to do what we instruct it to do. So if we haven't told the computer to turn it on, then it won't turn on. And that's why it's off right now. So this brings us to our next step, uh, that's writing code and getting familiar with the Arduino integrated development environment, which is the software that we use to write and check our code and upload it to our Arduino board. Thanks for watching today's video and make sure you check out our next video on how we can get started coding and um, getting this LED to blink using code. See you next time.